you're listening to Big Blend Radio's Lost Angel Travel Adventures show with Linda Ballou, travel writer and author, and your host, Lisa Smith. Hey, everybody. Today, Linda Ballou is taking us on a travel adventure to Costa Rica. She's been there before, and now she just came back from what I'm going to say is an epic adventure. It's all about nature and getting out there. Um, water, uh, just a good, happy place to be, it sounds like. She's got some articles going up that you can see on uh, nabbw.com. That is the National Association of Baby Boomers Women. Right, Linda? Is that right? Am I saying right, that? Right, right. I'm, yeah, I know that's a mouthful, but I'm the adventure travel writer for the National Association of Baby Boomer Women, and they have all sorts of information on that page for boomers. So I'm honored to be there. And the two articles that I wrote about this trip will be coming out this week. And um, we will right. share them in the show notes. I will provide yeah. them for you. Yeah. So, yeah, yes, and, but, uh, and, and you have hola. YouTube clips. YouTube <laughs> clips, too. But she's like, hola, yes. I love hola. <laughs> I love that word. Right. I'm so thrilled to have been able to go back to Costa Rica. I was uh, there um, in about 2015 on a completely different type of uh, experience because at that juncture, I was traveling uh, with a, a group of people who were in their 30s. <laughs> so, so it was a wild and uh, very uh, adventurous trip where we did all sorts of crazy things. Uh, and then I was also traveling with my other half, which is unusual. I don't normally travel with him when I'm traveling as a travel writer, but he wanted to go to Costa Rica. So, so we dared to do it together. So that trip was unique. And you're still and, together? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. But he didn't go on this trip. Uh, and, and I, and I was glad because when I'm traveling as a travel writer, I, it's a different experience where I'm trying to immerse myself in the situation and not be concer overly concerned about whether or not he's having a good time, you know? Mm -hmm. And also it allows me to meet and mingle with other people on the trip and, and be more spontaneous. So at any rate, this trip, um, that last trip was with active uh, South America, which is a, a company that's headquartered in New Zealand. And, um, they've grown exponentially since I took the trip. They still do have the trip down there, and, and it, it's a really wild and crazy okay. time with them. But I went uh, with Overseas Adventure Travel this time, which is a company geared to people over 55. So now the pace is a lot slower. Uh, the activities are, you have a lot of cultural activities um, and, you know, uh, but we did a lot of outdoor activities, too. It, it, it is um, the first uh, outdoor activity we did was river rafting on mm. the Serapaki River. And I have to tell you, I was so excited to be there because it's been a couple of years since I've, uh, well, I went, the last river I rafted was the Rogue River in Oregon during the pandemic. But uh, being out... That, yeah. Being out on the water in this lush jungle environment and, you know, it was only a class three river. So that's you're not going to die in something like that. You're going to get splashed. You're just going to laugh and giggle and have fun. And everybody did. And we were lucky. It was a gorgeous day. It was as blue as that sky behind me, which I was a little concerned about this because May is the beginning of the rainy season down there. May through November is the mm. rainy season. So I brought um, uh, wet pants, rain pants with me on this trip, thinking if we're going to be doing outdoor stuff, you know, maybe I need that. Be prepared. Oh, I did not need it. And I never took the wet so pants. So this is what you're grateful for climate change. <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, that's the upside of the downside, because the month prior, April, they had had a, a really intense heat wave. So... Oh. Um, my That's guide, cool. no, my guide said it was even too hot for him, you know, and with the humidity, I mean, it's, it's, it's a thing. So um, after we got off the river and we're at the rafting, uh, I won't call it shack, it was a rafting house and they had a restaurant and they had a lunch set us up for us out on this terrace overlooking the Ooh. river. 
And that's when it started to rain. It was just perfect. Oh. I mean, then everyone is happy. You couldn't have asked yeah. for a more perfect situation, you know, because we didn't, you know, we were you loving the, the uh, tropical rain, which of course freshened everything. And so green and lush, and you, you know, it's uh, was so good for so good for my skin, particularly. Mm -hmm. And um, even though it was humid, you know, I it wasn't that hot. It was in the seventies um, almost the whole time I was there. So, so yeah, rainy season was not that rainy. We had a couple of tropical showers here and there, but. They were exciting and fun. Nothing, you know, it wasn't a but, drenching yeah, down. I just want to say it is changing. The weather is oh, changing. Oh, yes. Absolutely. Everywhere. Everywhere. And, uh, mm -hmm. of course, it's affecting the rivers and the agriculture mm -hmm. and, and, and all of it in Costa Rica. So, mm -hmm. but their major uh, form of their economy is, is pretty much based on tourism. Um, mm -hmm. In my, you know, in my second article about this country... <laughs> I call it uh, a little country with a big heart because Costa Rica now is 60% uh, preserved. And when I was wow. there in 2015, uh, deforestation, the burning of the fires for uh, mm -hmm. raising uh, things that they're still doing down on the Amazon, unfortunately, has pretty much been curtailed. And wow. then, yeah, so 60% of the, the country is preserved. And you have these natural wildlife refuges all over the place. And one of the other things that they're doing is they're creating wildlife corridors. So you have uh, mm. islands of green that have been protected or reforested. And in order for the big animals like jaguars and, you know, uh, tapers and um, monkeys and some of the birds, they all have migration routes. Mm. In order for them to survive, um, they're creating wildlife corridors. So Costa Rica is really uh, leading the way for conservation. Mm -hmm. And, the other and thing those wildlife corridors came into our country, which actually I just recorded a podcast on that. Right, day. right. Um, they're the building one here in L.A. They've got yeah. one um, that's almost completed, actually, here in the Santa Monica Mountains. I live in the largest urban preserve in the United States. And we do have mountain lions and bobcats. And, you know, we do have some big animals. A lot, uh, and they need to have space so that they don't um, interbreed and so forth. So they're building a ramp over the 101, which is probably the busiest <laughs> freeway in the yeah. world. And they're doing it, and I'm I'm glad for it because um, otherwise the animals will go extinct. Mm. So um, yeah, the other thing, just generally about Costa Rica, I, I want to say is that they are really leading the way in clean energy. They mm. own the in the entire country has electricity from wind, solar, and thermal power and hydropower. Uh, no coal, no gas, you know, and the whole country is electrified. <laughs> so that even, yeah, even though uh, when you drive through some of the rural areas, it looks distressed, you know, you say, gee, you know, you, you wonder uh, about it, mm -hmm. you know, but uh, the fact is they all are on the internet and they all are educated. Um, education is mandatory in Costa Rica. Wow. Yeah. This 90. is sounding like a little paradise. That's what I'm point. saying. It's a big little country with a big heart because the government is really taking care of the people and the land. They're not just preserving the land and they have mm. universal medical and oh the other thing they are paperless. So you wow. they're totally paperless because everyone's on the internet. So um, they don't they're not You don't perfect. get guides, tourist guides. You don't get things like that in paper then, like when you're there. You can't pay. If you want your bills in paper, you have to pay to have them sent to you and mailed to you in paper. Other, you know, So everyone just pays their bills online and, you know, nobody, nobody yeah. fights about it. But, that, but this is really quite cool. If Yes. It's kind of an interesting example of what our country could do. They're leading the way. That's what I'm saying. You know, they're so progressive. Now, they're not perfect because, because no country is perfect. Who is? But yeah, 
Uh, they uh, dismantled their military in 1948 and converted their funds towards socialized situation, you know, socialized medicine for all and education for all and, you know, things like that. So uh, they're not the cars. There's a lot of gas driven cars because they can't afford the electric cars are too expensive for the average person down there. So, and it's still a very rural agricultural society. So, so when you talk about social, so is it like a so totally socialist? I mean, people can still make a, I, I need to touch on this because everybody has a different idea of what socialism is and socialist is and, um, you know, communism. They put it all in one big lump. So no. I want to just be clear about it's not, how, it's so not when, communism. So it's yeah, not so communism. Someone it's just a government. Up, they could run a restaurant and be profitable and afford a car if they want. Of course, of course. Yes. No, I no, just, they're very. Just had to clarify, just in <laughs> case. They just have a government yes, that <laughs> cares about the people. Okay? Oh, there's a start. There, there, there's a thought. That's all. <laughs> yes. So anyway, <laughs> all of the uh, we went after the river raft. Uh, we. What crossed this 860 foot suspension bridge, which was quite exciting, over the uh, Serapaki River? This whole region is really delightful. And he, our guide, Vinny, who was a biologist and just had an encyclopedic knowledge of the flora and fauna, you know, he made it very fascinating for us. Uh, he introduced us to the 600-year-old kapok tree that's in this forest. It's the oldest oh. forest, uh, old, the old man of the forest. This particular preserve is a, a scientific research uh, project. So they had a lot of cameras and things in there, and you know uh, they get uh, medicinal res pro pro research, you know, for drugs and things like that in this particular preserve. So there's a lot of that going on too, you know, a lot of uh, research into the forest and all the many, many, many species that still haven't been identified. So we had a, a very uh, lovely nature walk. Once again, it was, I would say a mile and a half, two miles loop in the forest, nothing strenuous, just beautiful and educational and we spotted a sloth actually we saw oh, two you know i wanted you to see that yeah <laughs> <laughs> we spotted two sloth one two-toed sloth and one three-toed sloth and they both look pretty much the same to me you know they're they're just kind of like furry, furry lumps up in the trees um but you know it was fun to to spot them um then we at this lodge i loved the lodge it was so it was like you know ensconced in tropical foliage with the lovely uh very laid back kind of a jungle lodge feel it was very oh, very i like that i like that <laughs> it was mm -hmm. cozy and fun. of course there was a pool there were pools and hot pools everywhere we went and um, birds what it, I got birds. from yeah, the two articles, they put the birds. The feeders out. They put feeders out for the birds at six in the morning and four in the afternoons because, you know, birds, um, it's hard to see them when you're walking in nature. They're out there. You can hear them, but, you know, mm -hmm. they don't get close enough for you. To I took my monocular, which was fun. I bought a, a monocular rather than binoculars because I could t put it on my waist and have my hands free for other things, you know. Yeah. And uh, it worked pretty good. It's not as good as binoculars, but in terms right. of traveling light and it being convenient, uh, it was great. Uh, another really fun nature trip we did was on the Rio Frio. We did a cruise on the, this river that traces the border of Nicaragua. Oh. And uh, yeah, it was um, uh, not the most scenic cruise I've ever been on because the rudder was a ruddy brown color, you know. But the animal life there was vibrant. We saw really fun spider monkeys leaping from tree to tree. I mean, they, they, were, they were hysterical. And uh, the white Was this the crocodile place or no? no there were, I did two cruises. The crocodile one was at the end of the trip over on okay. the Pacific coast. 
Um, this was border of Nicaragua. We covered a lot of geography on this I trip. know. How many and days? It was, it was almost 13, three weeks. It was 13, yeah. and we had two nights at each lodge, and each lodge was unique and different and wonderful. Two nights? So that's a good balance. That's a it nice is. balance. It is, because you have, like, um, at the one place we stayed, it was built in the 1930s, and I thought... I thought maybe the, you know, some the mafia characters had built it. It was like old world, <laughs> and, and it, 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 huge grounds, and it had huge, three huge pools, mm -hmm. thermal hot pools, nice. and then a swimming pool to cool off. But you had different dip temperatures in each pool. But what I really enjoyed about that place was the th breakfast on the terrace overlooking this creek. It was flowing through the oh. property and this lush foliage, beautiful blooms, flowers. Yeah, birds are coming. Oh, yeah, birds I mean, coming. I, I, I just was in heaven, honest to God. I really I, this, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of looking at, I mean, because all of us are wondering, where are we going at the end of this year? <laughs> well, you know, Costa, Costa, Rica, Costa Rica, like I said, the rainy season is typically May through November, but that is mm. changing. So I wouldn't necessarily yeah. not go there just because it's might have a little rain anyway it's also it's less expensive but uh than say hawaii for instance okay um, but i talked to a local man i was chatting with this local man at a beach and he asked me he said how do our prices compare to your your u.s prices and I said, well, they're really, the restaurant food and things like that are really about the same, you know? And, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. And you're in LA, so that's a little right. bit I mean, higher I, I than some other But areas. all of our, almost all of our meals were provided on this trip. Yeah. So I wasn't spending any money other than I, I bought two dresses in 20 minutes. <laughs> because oh, we, that... we didn't have a lot of time to shop. So I went, and okay. and, and this just proves you can be a tomboy and wear a dress, by the way. <laughs> well it, so uh uh he said oh well i understand he said i was afraid of that because we have so many expats here they are mm -hmm. there's fourteen thousand expats that uh, especially moved <sighs> into the beach areas um of on the course. Pacific coast and um pumped up their real estate prices you know is so, that is it good for Costa Rica do you think or not what I mean because like well, I'm looking what's going good, on this it's not good for the local people no you oh know. see that's not cool then I yeah. mean it's good for maybe the businesses the hotels and so on but for the you know locals local, to like, be able to like, live where they want right. to live like this man lived in San Jose and he was a professional photographer and he probably made a pretty good living you know he was there with his family anyway um back yeah, to the back, yeah back to the Rio Rio <laughs> yeah no, but this is but this is the thing of travel if you don't pick up what's going on in the world you didn't you didn't you you, you only you didn't keep your eyes open well your it was, heart and have these conversations right that's important to me well well this was a, yeah i like to meet the local people this was even though i was on a tour group we had a couple of afternoons in you know to our own and we were at um punta leona which um is like the beach behind me okay it looked kind of mm -hmm. like that and uh we had gone there the night before for sunset and drinks and so uh, there was a shuttle a public shuttle that went from our hotel back to that beach so the next afternoon i went mm, i think i'm gonna do that i'm gonna get on the so i get on the public shuttle i'm standing waiting for the public shuttle and i get into that conversation with that man i get on the shuttle it's absolutely freezing in this bus. They love air conditioning. The people who oh, live yeah. there love air conditioning. I personally because they're sweating all the time. Yeah, but and there was always good music everywhere I went, and you know, every in all the restaurants and all of the and on this bus, <laughs> it's great music. So we go to the beach, and I spend the afternoon there. And as I'm coming back. There's that man with his family now with his wife and his kids. And he introduces to me, give me a big hug, blah, blah, blah. Such sweet people. So nice. And, uh, you That's know, cool. for the local people, I think it's uh, it's like in Hawaii. There's this thing there. They say priced out of paradise, you know, where the local people are having to leave the islands 
for because you know wealthy people are buying it up it's just that simple but out in these rural areas different story where that's all along the coast the uh pacific coast where um, you know most of your you know like you have a lot of tourist hotels and things but the Rio Frio is definitely not a highly touristed situation. And I want to talk about it a little bit because mm -hmm. the people we met there were immigrants. Immigrants mm -hmm. lined up trying to get into Nicaragua. Oh, and wow. They were stopped in. Wow. Uh, they were stopped in Costa Rica because Nicaragua charges immigrants $250 a piece to cross the river and go into Nicaragua. So this Ooh. was a this is a situation for Costa Rica who has a more gentle attitude towards immigrants than the United States. They will not allow little children to sleep on the streets. They will gather up the little children and take them to places to, mm -hmm. you know, eat and sleep. But they'll leave the parents out there trying to so drum up odd. Trying yeah, to jump up two hundred and fifty dollars, right? Oh, so, I see. Oh, that's kind of cool. Well, yeah, it's, it's it's scary not, though. It's that's not scary if you're the parent. No, but I, I just only want to say that mass migrations are not just a problem for the United States. Everywhere, it's all over the world, and, and it's think, not just political. It's climate change too, and it's going right. to hit everyone. Harder. And it's going to be more and more and more. So we need to set up some reasonable ways to deal with these mass migrations that are just going to be more and more and more everywhere it's not gonna yeah you can't yeah yeah all right so yes let's <laughs> don't start so we'll get on to, i'm not we'll, gonna go there so, right we're yes, gonna move we, on we, we we're gonna need, move on we need good policies that are humane yes How indeed. About that? that's good so then uh we went after <laughs> uh rio frio oh some of the other things i should mention some of the cultural things that we did oh. that were really fun uh, one of them was we went to the home of a man who makes masks. And every October 31st, they have the masquerade parade that honors the agricultural heritage of Costa Rica. And he makes these, oh. it's more than a mask. It's like you put it over your head and it covers your whole body. Whoa. And he danced for us in his mask. It happened to be his 70th birthday and uh that's cool yeah he was such a such a cheery such a delightful person and so much fun and he said well the world gives me trouble mm -hmm. but in my workshop i find joy yeah and he had never left his workshop he'd lived there in the same house all his life he'd never left and he said you travel you take me traveling with your pictures of me <laughs> he was the that's... cutest guy and we met uh an indigenous woman who was struggling to keep the traditions of her indigenous tribe alive and she made this necklace for me oh, and cool um she is was the daughter of the last shaman in her tribe and she was training her son to be the shaman next shaman so she was uh, quite an interesting lady and we were in her home but one of the really highlights of this trip was a place uh, called the uh, blue river lodge it's as close to paradise as i can find i mean you oh. know wonderful lush tropical grounds and different hot pools from the you know heated by the nearby volcano oh. but what? Yeah, no. you know, but no, the, other, come on. the other thing that Are was you just like, oh, just 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 by the nearby volcano. No, right, you right. Know, this isn't this isn't like the typical pool. Like, you know what and I mean? Al and also, this is not a tour. There weren't a lot of tourists here. It, it's in up by, it's like 35 miles from the Liberia airport, which is in the north uh, mm -hmm. west part of the country. And it's newer there for starters. But anyway, this place, the Blue River Lodge is close to a two-tiered waterfall with a natural swimming pool and oh, i was, was so idyllic i can't she's talk. like let's go yeah I she's so like, I go. I, I, and I, but what was hysterical while i was floating in that swimming pool i looked overhead and there was a a human monkey flew by above me on a zip line <laughs> <laughs> human monkey 
I'm going into Wizard of yeah, Oz, yeah, so Blind they, Monkeys. So, <laughs> yeah, so it was like a tourist area, but not heavily <laughs> touristed because most people go into San Jose, you know, that which is in the southern area of the country. Southern Central, it's the Central Valley, they call it, where San Jose is. And I asked uh, Vinny, I said, why Why did they put make San Jose the capital? Why not something on the coast? You know, like Los Angeles is on the coast. New York is on the coast, right? Um, and he said, because it's at higher altitude, it's like at 4,000 feet, so it's cooler. So on the coast, it's hotter and more humid. And in the mountains, it's cooler. It's humid, but it's cooler. It, and when we went back there, I really noticed the difference when we went from the coast back to San Jose. So that is why um, hmm. uh, that 850,000 people live in San Jose. And there's 5 million people in the country, the whole country. Wow. So anyway, um, yeah, that was so delightful. The Blue But Root. that's a small country when you think of it. It is about the size think, of Virginia. Yeah. And then when you think of the population compared to L.A. Right. It, I can say it, it's still very agricultural. And that brings me to a, mm. a con con controversial subject. And that is mm -hmm. the fact that... Um, Pineapple is their leading export. And we drove through pineapple fields and where there were a nearby village. And since uh, 2000, there have been many, many protests by the local people uh, against the spraying pesticides oh. on the pineapple fields because which is going to that's going like, against our whole motto. Well, it is. And especially when so much is being done to save and preserve the wildlife, the mm. creatures, you know, pesticides goes into the bird it's life, cancer. all of it, and the people, the yeah. claiming uh, disease and so on. So uh, apparently they have settled out of court. Uh, the Dole company um, has settled. Oh, that same company as Hawaii. Yeah, it's but Hawaii is, yeah, don't Hawaii is not doing it. I don't think they're over there that much anymore. Anyway, yeah, they are there. That went after them. They've moved to Costa Rica. And, um, you know, there's the complication that it's the largest export. And the fact that it is, you know, really a bad policy to spay presses. We have it here in California. I have strawberry fields outside of Oxnard with people saying, yes, getting yep. sick. I mean, it's. You know, it is a problem. Um, I, have, and... I have a friend who died from it. Really? Yep. Well, Young I... girl. And who lived the cleanest, purest life. She was mm -hmm. a massage therapist, clean as can be. All she did is once in a while have a glass of wine, lived in a vineyard in Napa, and it was the spray <laughs> from the vineyards in uh, Napa. And well, they do. Some of them do. Some, you know, the vineyards we work with don't. And she, she ended up dying at tender well, age of her mid thirties. You would think Thanks with all the that. education that we have in this country that we would stop. But at any rate, that, that was that. I just going to mention that. And yeah, I, it's and sad. I so mentioned the immigration thing, which were the only two issues that I found, you know, I mean, otherwise I think the country is doing very, very well in preserving their natural beauty. I mean, in the seventies, there were hunters poaching, you know, eating the, the yeah. game for food. Uh, now those uh, people, hunters and trackers and people like that are guarding the preserves, much like in Africa. You know, it has converted over to a tourism economy. And, um, and that's a good thing, you know? Yeah. I but, think adult, but adult pineapple does do that thing. It's like the country comes in and says, we need this economy to come in. And right. uh, Nicaragua is uh, Nicaragua. Yeah, it is Nicaragua going through the same kind of weird thing right. with oil coming into their country. They have resources, so they're letting people in. And yet they have protected their land for so many years. And now they're allowing this to happen because the previous president allowed it. But they're, it's it's wonky. And it's like, because yeah. no, no one can be pure. There's no way because human right. beings aren't pure. We right. don't live a pure life. So, and, yeah. you know, Pura Vida, what is Pura Vida, right? <laughs> well, I, I just, you know, I just want to say the people there are so sweet and gracious. Um, very, very, very nice people. I, I, I will, I asked Vinny about the drug trade, you know, the cartels, were they in Costa Rica? 
And he said, no. Oh, he said, cool. what we have is submarines and boats coming up from Venezuela and other places south of them. And their police force, their Coast Guard, will go out and bust the drug dealers. And so the drug dealers will throw the stuff off, the, off their boats. And so sometimes it'll float up on shore. So there are local yeah. people who, you know, don't mind that collecting a bag that, of stuff. <laughs> that happened when we lived in Mexico. We saw actual bales of stuff come up. Well, from, there you go. We, we, said, we've seen it. We've he, literally seen it. And people ran out and knew. And you'd start seeing people come and they knew it was coming. Right. And it was like the general public knew it was free weed for everybody at that right. point. Well, he said, I, that's, just saying, he yeah. said there's not any real organized crime mm. in Costa Rica, which is a nice thing. Nice. Yeah. But they, they're pretty, as I recall from a friend who's been there, she's like, you, you can buy weed anywhere. Kind of thing. I don't know. Well, I, I don't, don't know. know. I, I wasn't. I wasn't in that local. Well, maybe she was. Good, that maybe local. she was just good at that. I don't know. I don't know. So but. let me just uh, say, you know, so our trip was uh, very well organized. As I say, mm. we we oh the other hike we took, which was really nice, was in the Arenal. The Arenal volcano is uh, the most typical place. For, region for everyone to go because Fortuna is like the you know a big tourist center where you connect with all these outdoor adventures like zip lining and river rafting and all and and there's a huge Human monkeys <laughs> yeah there's a huge uh, hot mountain of hot pools like 10 or 15 different pools which we did when I went the last time last time um I was when I was with Steve I did the hot pools, uh, spent a day going from one pool to the other, and they had a a, a bar where you could sit at. <laughs> and you, could, you know, so I spent the afternoon there thinking that was pretty Ooh. wonderful, uh, you know, while he went zip lining. And oh, wow. I, yeah, I didn't really, they have a huge zip line there in Arenal area. It's like 12 different platforms. And he came back off of that with his eyes as big as saucers and he was a speed freak. So I was, and he said, he said, you don't want to do this. You don't want to do this. He said the wind was whipping him back and forth in the, in this little harness that they But he enjoyed in. it, didn't he? Oh, he loved it. He loved it. That was, a, <laughs> he thought that was fabulous, but he's a Harley guy. You know, he rides his motorcycle at a hundred mm. miles an hour. Crazy person. Okay. So, but now this trip, this is an interview about Steve. Now let's learn about Steve. <laughs> but so, no, but that's cool. That's well, cool. So because this, it gives people an idea for other travel size sites. Right. You know? Well, let me just say this trip, they offered that to us. It was an extension and it cost 60 bucks. I didn't want to go that's because, bad, because yeah. of what Steve told me. You know, I, went, <laughs> well, I don't I don't need to do that. Well, the other several of the other guests, women who were not real outdoorsy people at all came back giggling and laughing and saying oh that was great fun i loved it loved it loved oh it. no so you yeah. made it, you made yeah, it but you. They, they didn't have a windy day they had a beautiful oh. sunny day i think it, that might have been the difference you know okay okay but, but they, what did you do i lingered by the pool we were at a place called echo arenal which was an echo lodge we had a pool there and um she, the woman who owned it, loved flowers, so she had this luxuriant garden, and you know, um, uh, I was happy to be there. Oh my I gosh, had... tropical flowers! Are you kidding me? I'm <laughs> in. And what about the bird life while you were there? Well, we I just touch on that. That's got to well, be an epic. Uh, okay, thing well, for the most place. bird life I saw was on the crocodile cruise. The crocodile cruise was on the Pacific coast. Now, see where the ocean okay. behind me is the Pacific, and this river flowed into the Pacific. So we had a mixture of shorebirds, you know, ocean seabirds, mm -hmm. uh, and um, birds that live in the mangrove forest, because you had that element there. And we went deeper into the river where we saw the head of a 17 foot crocodile named Monster. He was 93 years old. And he was uh, being challenged by a 70 year old named Mike Tyson. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So these two were the like the heavy hitters in the crocodile cruise. Uh, but for me, the birds were more interesting. And we saw, you know, pelicans, which of course I have here, and a, a type of cormorant that they call yahinga. Oh. Yeah, uh -huh. are smaller and they're black and white and they're but the similar kind of species. A lot of heron, green heron, black brown heron, uh, tricolored heron. Oh, a roseate spoonbill, roseate. Oh, you know, uh, lots Did of. Did you other... see a toucan on any I saw part a of toucan, your I saw <gasps> toucan. I saw a toucan. I saw much. I did not see a quetzal. I've been uh. to Costa Rica twice. No quetzal sightings. Uh, you might have to go a third time. On the last trip, I went to Monteverde, which is supposed to be the real birding um, hotspot. But I'm telling you, if and it, it's a beautiful place, and they have a suspension bridge that gets you up into the canopy, which is great. And uh, but if you really want to see the birds in Monteverde or anywhere else, you have to go at dawn. You know, yes. you have to get up with the birds when they're active, yes. and you need a good guide, and you need a guide that's got a spotting. Um, state lens you know the camera they put on a stand because, and you know, because you hear them before you see them you know right really and, and, and and Vinny did that for us when we were in Punta Leona which was our hotel on the Pacific coast side um he took us for a nature work in what is a very large preserve um 37 acres of preserved forest where there are uh, scarlet macaw are recovering from extinction so he took us uh, on a, a little field trip there and he had the spotting scope so we could see the, them up closely through the scope. Because, you know, I saw them in flight. I saw a couple of pairs of them in flight, quite dramatic. They wow. mate for life, the, the macaws mate for life. And um, it was very sweet to see them happy and prune, preening and See, together. if you're a birder, this is when you got to bring the big lens and you have to have the giant well, lens. You have yeah. to have a guide. You you know, I mean, invest mm -hmm. in a birding guide. I was lucky. Vinny is a biologist and he was a birding mm -hmm. guide. He, you know, we didn't have to go any further than Vinny to to spot wildlife. And that that's was awesome. Cool. Yeah, I can't say enough about him. He was so together. And, you know, there were 14 of us and, he, you know, he kept us all on track. And he kept, you know, our hotels, you know, were ready for us when we arrived, you know. So, yeah. Dinner. So did they just move your, your luggage from hotel to hotel for you? Yeah. Yeah. We had a van. Wow. We had a little bus, not a huge bus, not a, you know, giant bus and, and a wonderful driver, which is very important in Costa Rica. There have been complaints about their infrastructure being dangerous, uh, you know, because it's not well maintained. I have to say, though, I didn't experience that i heard about it before um, I, I would left. like to say is everybody driven across america lately um it's hell i don't even want to talk about what i just went through a day ago so it's uh, a little bit on the but but part of the hell is that they're fixing it so we have to kind of just go okay i know our tires i'm gonna have to invest in new tires really quickly um but if they're fixing it, we're going to have to go through hell for the fix to get it better, right? So, but well, there's, you there's, know, you probably it's a difference. You may have heard on the news that a mudslide closed uh, Topanga Canyon Boulevard, which is a main artery wow. from the valley to the beach, which is where I live. No. And uh, so, for months, we were not able to go on that road at all. But uh, Governor Newsom stepped in, made it an emergency, and I went to the beach yesterday. So, but anyhow, back to Costa Rica, they, yeah. my driver, we were on narrow mountain roads and I really, you know, wouldn't suggest trying to drive there. So I know people do and they drive independently and God bless them. But some of these roads are very narrow and you meet these giant trucks and buses and things on them. I don't know how he maneuvered some of these places we were. And that also, you can't read the signs there in Spanish. And by the way, not everyone there speaks English. I think Americans especially think, oh, I can go anywhere and they'll all speak English. No, they're educated, but they don't all speak English. In mm -hmm. fact, most of the people that I ran into in stores and shops and grocery stores did not speak English. Kind of like Mexico's they were, like that. Yeah, they, yeah. they could uh, convert whatever I was purchasing from colonies to U.S. dollars if I wanted okay. them to on their phones. They had, they had the ability to convert. See, they're very internet savvy. They know how to use their phones. 
and everybody has a phone. So, but they don't necessarily speak English, which kind of surprised me, you know, because they are well-educated. We went to a school that was another sweet stop that we made was at a school. I told you education is mandatory. And the kids uh, were excited to say hello in English and shake our hand. And, you know, we did dance with them in a conga line. And, but the school was immaculate super Mm. clean um you know and you know they give the kids a meal a day and for some of those kids it's the only good meal they're gonna get that's kind of like in africa right and here and this country and and here it we do have we do have places in this country where kids are not Mm -hmm. you know getting a meal at home that school meal can be everything and it's so hard i have a friend who's a chef who did school programs And the amount of money that is dedicated to school meals, he's like, that's not enough. So for kids to get the protein. So he started giving kids quinoa and things like that, that goes into our Latin countries. Right. And he started feeding them. He's trying to give them the healthiest, most nutritious meal, but you're doing it for like two to three bucks a head, which is almost impossible. And so, but he did it. He, he, figured out a menu looking at the nutrients so i think it's really those programs like you're saying it just seems like they're they're trying really hard as a country to have you know they have that happiness index i think bhutan is at the top of happiness it sounds like costa rica is trying to be the happiest as well like a happy index right know, well in, quality in, of life index right. kind of thing i would say that and in terms of their food it's very wholesome Ma, you know, ma, p- mounds of fresh fruit, you know, papaya, mango. Yeah. Well, I was reading your mounds articles. Of fresh I'm like, fruit I'm and, in. <laughs> yeah. and uh, lots of vegetables. And mm. they don't have a lot of seasoning in their food, really. I was kind of surprised because, you know, Mexican, Mexican food. I eat Mexican food all the time here. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And it uh, can be pretty spicy. But their, their uh, seasoning, what I experienced was, you know, moderate. Uh, was it letting the vegetable yeah. were the vegetables do you think did the vegetables have flavor and the fruit have flavor yeah, oh no, yes everything was flavorful and very mm-hmm. fresh and we had more so you don't fish. have to do as much spice then yeah, yeah we had more fish than we did um you know beef or we had chicken and fish pretty much mm-hmm. for entrees and most of our meals but anyway um mm-hmm. it was all good it was wonderful and um what else can i tell you other than that oh i can say that the big difference one of the big differences between the trip in 2015 and the one i took this time was that uh in the active trip active south america trip we had a tent camp on the beach at playa blanca for three nights and had our own little restaurant where they served us whatever fresh fish and whatever we wanted for breakfast you know and that was a wonderful, wonderful experience that I don't know that I could enjoy so much today uh, as I did then, you know, sleeping on the ground and, you know, mm. in the tent. And But it was fabulous. And I'm so glad I did it. And, you know, Steve loved it. He enjoyed it. And he's not a real outdoorsy guy, but it was it was just great fun. But this mm. trip, all of the accommodations were lovely uh, resort type hotels in, you know, lush grounds. And, you know, I, I guess I'm at a stage where I really prefer that. Are I, you I, in the I boomers? Reached, I've reached that stage. I've re- I may have reached that stage. I don't know. Maybe not. Well, we'll see. I don't know. You know, it, it's interesting because we do change. I'm even starting to change. Like, okay, you know, I want a little bit more of this than I did then. And it's it's kind of a weird thing to process because... But it does happen. I think well, we whenever had, you, you know, know we it had, does. We had plenty of outdoor activities, and I'm so glad that in the past I've done some, you know, roughing it. You know, I I rafted the Grand Canyon and loved sleeping in a tent. On but the now, beach. but listen, the more you do of that stuff, you know, your body took a beating, and that's the thing. <laughs> so you know, your body Poor takes body. a beating when, when I'll we tell do all you. those. Things. Yeah, and so your body at some point goes, listen, can you just give me some cushiness at the end of the day? You really like, give me some slack. On. I know. You we know, have to. I- 
But I promised, you know. I made a promise to my body on the last big trip I did, and I did it in British Columbia. I did a horse pack trip up into the back country of British Columbia, and I loved it. Okay, absolutely loved it. But the on the last day, the ride back was twenty five miles, and at a Ooh, very fa at a very fast clip. And when I got yeah. off that horse, I promised my back I would never do that to it again. <laughs> <laughs> and it would, if it you would just allow to me to survive this situation. I, Can I, I just even get to the car or the hotel room at this point? Yeah. <laughs> you, you make those deals, you know, it's so yeah. good because we do I get probably, ourselves in, but this is all you know, water. I, this trip, I swam everywhere we went. You know, oh, there was see, that's good for your body. Everywhere. That's and, good. Oh, and, uh, we did an outrigger trip here at this beach behind me and had a picnic there that last day and swam in that water, which was mm. very warm and salty. That's Hawaiian. Oh, yeah. That's Hawaii well, connection. Ther therapeutic, yeah. therapeutic stuff. Mm. <laughs> it was great. But water is always healing, right, for the body. It's embryonic yeah. and it's good to stretch, gentle, flowy. You know, it's like yoga, you know, all that. Right. Water is good for the body. So that's Indeed. okay. There's, a, there's, there's definitely things, you know, but here's the deal. Do what you can when you can, and then you, you have can. to slow down. Do it because listen, when we die, that's when we get to sleep. Screw the yeah, rest really. of it. Just go for it. Really, <laughs> no, pre no pressure there. <laughs> no, no rest for the wicked. I love it, but I think you had a really good time, and, and oh, I think fabulous. this is the first time you've been on the show talking about um, being outside of the United States since COVID. Because you went to yeah. Australia was the last time, correct. right? I think. That's correct. And that was so right before you were there, like the right. fires were happening. You got right. home in time for the pandemic. And you're like, it's, what the hell is this? <laughs> that's true. That was the last international trip I took. And it was absolutely fabulous. And this was. was great. Just great. I can't recommend the company Overseas Adventure Travel enough. And, oh, that's uh, awesome. and and active South America also good. Mm. Just a different beach, a different different way of going. Different <laughs> different age group, maybe. I don't know. It just depends on your body, you know. I don't mm. think it is about age always, you know. Um, we can't we can't say it's this or that, you know, because when I look at what's going on in travel now, it doesn't matter if you're, you know, 21 years old or 75, right? The, it seems that most of us really are at this point of wanting an authentic, really cool experience instead of, you know, we want we want it to be meaningful. So I think that's really cool. You know, I, I love I love I love that you went to Costa Rica and the fact that you saw a toucan. I told you two <laughs> things, a sloth and a toucan. You must oh. experience them and you did it. So thank you very much for having those experiences for me. Now I need to go, though. That's the All most right, important Lisa, thing. You really, do, you really should go, honestly. I know, I, I'm ready to move there by the time you're done. I'm like, I'm in. I'm in. Fresh fruits, vegetables, beach, sloths, crocodiles, toucans. What the heck? And flowers. That's and all flowers. I mean. And flowers. Sunshine. I don't know about the rain. Ah, I know, but we have to go through that. But but it's getting, uh, who knows what's going to happen. But uh, Linda, we look forward to next month. But hey, are you doing any travel between now and then? Actually, I'm going to enjoy the California coast. Um, You're home now. Yeah, June, yes. is, June is my birthday month. And I tend Ooh, to, I always birthday. go up to Santa Barbara. I love Santa Barbara. Yeah. And, uh, treat myself. See the to seals. Well, I, I have a favorite beach and i love the park i want to go to lotus land there which is a very special garden that i've never Ooh. attended and 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 also there's the central coast uh, you know i think i'll be hanging around Ooh. california for a while and then um i've been invited to go up to oregon so we'll see we'll see Ooh. what happens i'll keep Ooh. you posted <laughs> awesome everyone keep up with linda at los angel adventures dot com and also go to linda author dot com thanks so much linda always fun thank you lisa Thank you for listening to Big Blend Radio's Lost Angel Travel Adventure Show with Linda Ballou, travel writer and author. Keep up with her at lindabalouauthor.com and lostangeladventures.com. You can also keep up with Big Blend Radio at bigblendradio.com. Now, happy traveling!